हेलो स्टूडेंट्स मैं सेल्फ संखोस एसिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ ऑटोमोबाइल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट डॉक्टर सुधीर चंद्र सूद डिग्री इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज लद्दाख जी आई एस टूडे डिस्कस ऑन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ मॉडर्न व्हीकल टेक्नोलॉजी दिस इज द सेवेंथ सेमिस्टर ऑटोमोबाइल इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडेंट्स सब्जेक्ट्स द कोड ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट इज ए यू ई सेवन जीरो फोर बी टूडे विल डिस्कस ऑन न्यू टॉपिक दैट इज एयर सस्पेंशन सिस्टम दिस इज अंडर द मॉड्यूल नंबर ऑफ टू और suspension brake and the safety here in this system or in this topics we'll dis we'll learn about the various types we have learn the component of the air suspension systems its components its working principle and its failure students can easily learn from here about the air suspension systems its history to understand its working principle to know the various components you those are using in this air suspension system so students let's start the air suspension system the job the job of a car suspension is to maximize the friction between the tires and the road surface to provide steering stability with the good handling and to ensure the comfort of the passengers if roads were perfectly flat with no irregularities suspension would not be necessary but they are not therefore this imperfection interact with the wheel of a car and apply some forces on them a bump in the road causes the wheel to move up and down perpendicular to the road surface the magnitude depends on the whether the wheel is striking a giant bump or tiny speed so air suspension system is a type of vehicle suspension powered by an electric or engine driven air pump or the compressor this compressor pumps the air into a flexible bellows usually which is made from textile reinforced rubber unlike the hydro pneumatic suspension which offer many similar features air suspension does not use pressurized liquid but it used pressurized air so students hydro pneumatic suspension and the air suspensions the basic difference is that hydro pneumatic suspension use pressurized liquid and air suspension is used pressurized air the air pressure inflates the bellows and rises 
the chassis from the axle. The air suspension is used in place of conventional steel spring in the heavy vehicle application such as buses, trucks and in some passengers car. It is widely used on the semi trailers and the chain, basically the primary passenger chain. So students, if we carefully observe, we want to carefully observe the train, means passenger trains or buses and truck, we will see a cylinder which is attached the rear, rear portion of the buses and truck. So that's, that is the compensation. So student, this air suspension is to provide a smooth, constant ride quality, quality. But in some cases, is used for sports suspension. Modern electrical, electronically controlled system, the modern electronically controlled system in automobile and light truck almost always features self-leveling with along with the raising and lowering the function. So this is the basics of assessment. Now comes to the history of this air suspension. In the year of 1901, an American William Humphrey patented an idea of a pneumatic spring for the vehicles. The design consists of a left and right air, air spring longitude and channel near the length of the vehicle. The channels were concave to receive two long pneumatic cushions. Each one was close to one end and provided with an air valve at the other end. In the year of 1920, the Frenchman George Messier provided aftermarket pneumatic suspension system. His own 1920 to 1930 Messier automobiles features a suspension to hold the car a lot on four gas bubbles. Later in the year of 1946, an American William Bushnell Stott built a non-production prototype stout scrap scrap that feature numerous innovation including a four wheel independent air suspension system. In the year of 1950, the air lift, the air lift company patent a rubber spring, rubber air spring that is inserted into a car factory coil spring. The air spring expand, expanded into the spaces in the coil spring, keeping the factory spring from fully compressing and the vehicle from sedging. In the year of 1954, Frenchman Paul Magis developed a functioning air 
ऑयल हाइड्रोन्यूमेटिक सस्पेंशन इनकॉर्पोरेटिंग द एडवांटेज ऑफ अर्लियर एयर सस्पेंशन कंसेप्ट बट विथ हाइड्रोलिक फ्लूड रैदर देन द एयर अंडर द प्रेशर sorry uh, yeah under the pressure so so then this is the basic history of the air suspension now we will discuss on the working principle of the air suspension the air suspension was offered as an optional equipment by the automobile manufacturers however this system did not gain popularity and hence is no longer available here in the picture shows a line diagram of the complete system which is used in the cars in the air suspension the four spring are replaced by the four air bag in this air suspension the four springs are replaced by the four air bags each air bag is filled with compressed air which supports the weight of the vehicle the air gates for the compressed and the air gate for the compressed and absorb the shock when the vehicle encounters a bump on the road and air compressor supplies air to the system as it is driven with the help of belt from the engine and air compressor supply and air compressor supplies air to the system and it is driven and it is driven with the help of of a belt from the engine the pressure in the reservoir the pressure in the reservoir is maintained about to 20 kg per centimeter square the air is admitted into the four bags through the two circuits in one circuit the air pressure is reduced to 120 newton per centimeter square with the help of a regulator this pressure is admitted into the four air bags through the leveling valve whenever there is insufficient air in an air bag that side of the car will ride low this state shall cause the leveling arm to move through linkages thereby opening the level and admitting more yeah the other circuit have a supply of air at 200 liter per centimeter square which is used to correct additional loading of the car the circuit maintains the car level irrespective of whether there are passengers or not the air at 200 newton per centimeter square pressure is admitted into the leveling valve 
through the solenoid valve. The air is fed into the low air bag which has been compressed by added weight by the leveling valve thus bringing it in level with the other bag. The air is quickly released by the leveling valve when the load is decreased from the air bag to lower it to the proper level. So students, this is the, this is the working principle of this air suspension system. The next is component of airbag suspension. So air suspension. An air suspension has three basic components. The first one is air supply, second one is the air bag, and fourth one is the height control one. Here, let's start with this air supply. The air supply is engine, air compressor, the air tank, the air valve, and the air lines. The engine air com compressor supplies air for every piece of air equipment on the vehicle. The maximum pressure supplied by the compressor varies. For many years, the air supply was maintained about 120 to 125 psi. But on some newer, larger vehicle, this has been increased to increase up to 135 psi. There will be dash gauge that will supply system pressure information but all vehicle shape vehicle have what we refer to as pop up valve. On one on can hear the valve pop up when the system reaches the maximum air pressure. The air supply is maintained through an arrangement of air tank. Air tank arrangement is one thing that varies greatly between different air system. There can be as many as 10 to 12 different tanks. The terminology for these tanks varies greatly also. These are, there are primary tank, secondary tank, weight tank, auxiliary tank, front brake tanks, rear brake tanks. The only purpose of this air tank is to store the air from the different systems of the vehicle. So, so these are the air supply. Next is Air bag. Air bags are simply a rubber bladder that holds the air. Air bags are also referred to as air string or billows. 
the airbags are located between the frame of the vehicle and the vehicle axles the airbags are rated for weight and pressure capacities the airbag placement and arrangements vary among the chassis manufacturers at the very least there will be one airbag for each side of each axle in the vehicle there can be two airbags for each side of the drive and front axle space in between the airbags for side to side placement also varies some place the airbags outboard as far as they can and some have the bags closer together when two bags per side are used one will be in front of the axle and the other behind the axle again spacing can vary most airbags will have some device such as a cone that keep the airbag from being crushed or damaged with fully deflected in setting airbags is limited to the available air pressure to the suspension system this is why the relief seating of engine air compressors should not be changed so students these are the the air bags those are the component of the air suspension next one is height control valve the height control valve or hcv or the kind of the brain of the system they dictate how much air is in the airbags this dictates the height the vehicle sits at therefore they are known as the height control valve most of the height control valves are mechanical valves but electronical electronic height control valves are also available the height control valve is mounted to the frame of the vehicle now comes to the types of air suspension system there are the three most air suspension systems one is rubber below air spring second one is slip style air spring and third is coil spring air spring so let's start with the rubber below air spring bellows are a common type of air spring and this type of air bag offers several benefits first the below is typically constructed out of reinforced rubber and has a single or the multiple 
chambers the shape of resembles a coffee can means the rubber bellows here springs and looks like a coffee can due to their large diameter due to the large diameter compared to the sleeve and the coil spring airbag bellows can accommodate heavier load plus the design allows the air spring to lift heavier load at lighter psi pressure pressure in psi unit which makes it load distribution easier that's why bellows are typically installed on twin vehicles four wheel drive trucks and off road SUV of course here the picture shows the rubber below here spring the next one is slip style air spring slip style air spring is an another type of s suspension so here's the slip air spring are also a cylindrical but they have a smaller diameter compared to the rubber bill rubber below air springs typically these air springs are built with reinforced rubber or a heavy duty synthetic rubber compound like polyurethane the biggest difference is that slip air spring are designed for the lighter load and they are often used for adjusting the ride height for an example in hot rod design slip air springs are used to increase slip air spring are used to increase the traction and adjust the height of the vehicle this is the slip style air spring here in the picture shows picture here is a picture of a slip style air spring now these are the coil spring which is the another which is the another types of the air suspension system and like same and like the slip style air spring or the rubber below air spring coil spring or coil air bags are fitted inside the existing factory installed coil spring that means the air suspension system, in the coil spring air suspension system the air bag is installed into the coil spring which is already fitted from the factory 
दसली द गोल ऑफ द कॉयल स्प्रिंग द गोल ऑफ द कॉयल स्प्रिंग इज टू प्रोवाइड एडिशनल सपोर्ट टू द स्प्रिंग विच हेल्प टू प्रोवाइड बैटरी स्टेबिलिटी और मोर इवेंटली डिस्ट्रीब्यूट द वेट ऑफ द लोड इंस्टेड ऑफ एक्टिंग लाइक ए स्प्रिंग दो दिस एयर बैग कुशिंग एयर बैग कुशिंग द स्प्रिंग फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल इफ यू वेट वेइंग ए लोड द स्कॉयल स्प्रिंग वुड नेचुरली पुश टूगेदर एंड द कॉयल वुड गेट closer together a coil spring air bag to example outward limited how close the coils can get together so students these are the Another type of the coil spring airbag. Here in the picture shows so the coil spring, and which is looks colored in blue, which is uh, already installed from the battery, and the red red color component is called the airbag. So this system, uh, this whole system is called as a coil spring airbag, air suspension system. After knowing the various components, see what is principle. Now comes to the failure of the, I mean the failure of the air suspension system. There are basically four failures is shown in the air suspension system. First one is airbag or air struck failure. Second is airline failure. Third one is compressor failure. And the fourth one is dryer failure. Airbag or air struck failure is usually caused. by weight rust due to the old age or moisture within the air system the damage is it from the inside air ride air ride suspension parts may fail because rubber dries out punctures to the air bag may be caused from the debris on the road with Custom application, improper installation may cause the airbags to rub against the vehicles, frame, or other surrounding parts, damaging it. the over extension of air. The over extension of an air stream. which is not sufficiently constrained by other suspension components such as a shock absorber may also lead to the premature failure of an air spring through the tearing of the flexible layer failure of an air spring may also result in complete immobilization of the vehicle since the vehicle will rub against the ground or be too high to move however most modern automotive systems have overcome many of this problem the airline failure is a failure of the tubing which connects the airbag or starts 
to the rest of the air system and is typically dot approved nylon airway line. This usually occurs when the air lines which must be routed to the airbag through the chassis of the vehicle rub against a sharp edge of a chassis member or a moving suspension component causing a hole to form this mode of failure will typically take some time to occur after the initial installation of the system as the integrity of the section of your line is compromised to the point of failure due to the ravi and resulted aversion of the material on your line failure may also occur if a piece of float debris hits an air line and punctures or tears it although it is unlikely to occur in normal road use it does occur in errors of road condition but it still not common in correctly installed next is compressor failure compressor failure is primarily due to leakage air spring or the air struts the compressor will burn out trying to maintain the correct air pressure in a leakage air spring system compressor burn out may also be caused by moisture from within the air system coming into contact with its electronic parts this is for more likely to occur with low specification compressor with insufficient duty cycle which are often purchased due to the low cost for redundancy in the system two compressor are often a better option next is dryer failure in the dryer failure the dryer which functions to remove moisture from the air system eventually become saturated and unavailable to perform that function that is called the dryer failure this causes moisture to build up in the system and can result in damage air spring or end or a burn out the compressor so so these are the failure of the air suspension so students today I will learn the air suspension system. Here, you can knowing about knowing the knowing what is air suspension system. You can understand the working principle of the air suspension system. And before it working suspension system, you can know knowing the history of the air suspension system. Then the working principle system. Then Uh, then, then after that we discuss the various components of the air suspension system and the failures of the and the various failures of this which is shown in this air suspension system. So, Susan, this is the air suspension system. The next. Class, we'll discuss a new topic. So, till then, stay safe and stay at home. Thank you. Thank you so much.